Welcome to our back garden bushcraft. Uh, these are a section of videos for First Abergavenny Scouts that cover various aspects of bushcraft and camping skills. So today we're going to look at fire lighting and how to build your fire from scratch. Okay, so the first part of fire lighting is to make sure you have sufficient fuel to light your fire. You need to grade your fuel starting off with very fine twigs probably no more than a matchstick in diameter that's your first thing and you you need a good double handful of these twigs to get you started you then move on to these sticks which are about the diameter of a pencil again another big double handful if you go any bigger than this you will not get the heat transfer from the smaller twigs to this one to get a good fire going. After these, you move on to your sticks about thumb thickness in diameter. This will allow you to get a good self-sustaining fire. These sticks all need to be dry. And the easiest way with sticks to make sure they're dry is when you take a stick like this, it should snap cleanly. So that makes part of our fuel. So if you don't have access to the small twigs, you can take your logs and split them down. So what we're going to do next, I'm going to go over to my chopping block and show you how to process this log down into smaller sticks for your fire and fire lighting. The safest way for scouts to split these logs down is to use an axe and a mallet to drive the axe through. It's under far more control and you're less likely to hurt yourself. Again, with using all tools, you must make sure that you have a clear area all around you. And that area should be at least your arm's length plus the tool that you're using. And that should be in front of you, above if you're swinging the axe, and also behind you. The axe remains covered until you're ready to use it. I'm going to take the cover off and the axe is going to transfer to my left hand. I'm going to place the axe on the log this way. No matter what happens, if the axe goes right the way through the bit of wood I'm trying to split, it will only stop into the log and cannot transfer through to hit any part of my body. So you put it on center, a good firm strike. Once we've split it once, we'll then take it down again find the most stable way to place your piece of wood on the block before you start. Okay, so we're going to split this down again. So you get your piece of wood on there, place the axe on it again, making sure it's at right angles to your body, and hit again. Then gentle tapping, just give you the control to go through. The smaller the pieces, the harder it is going to be to control the axe going through it. You take the axe and go through it once more. It will balance. Okay, now we have smaller pieces. Down to the smaller pieces, using an axe to split them any finer becomes harder to control. So what we're gonna do is to change over from the axe to the knife. So we'll safely cover the blade on the axe. 
that can be stored out the way. I'm going to move over to my knife now. Again, using the mallet to push the knife through. Your left hand holds a knife for this if you're right handed because you're only using it to guide. You take your piece of wood, then you place your knife on there again at right angles to your body so that there's no way that a knife can go through and travel into any part of your body when you're doing this. And then you tap gently. The knife will go through a lot easier. And the axe does. And you can see, as we're going down, you'll get down to pencil thickness pieces of wood quite easily. If you're going to need to go down any smaller than that, the best way is to make feather sticks, which we'll cover in another video. Okay, so just to light the fire, we're going to use a mixture of tinders. And part of it to start with is going to be some fat wood shavings. So this is a pine wood that is absolutely loaded with resin and we're going to shave or scrape some of the wood off into a little pile onto the piece of bark there. So I'm going to safely remove my knife from the sheath. I'm going to use the spine of the knife which is the back of the blade to scrape a pile of shavings onto the wood. Okay, once I've got a nice little pile onto the piece of bark, I'm going to transfer this all over to my fire pit. Okay, so in my fire pit, to start the fire off, you put down a nice bed of fuel sized pieces of wood. Not so important on a fire pit, but if you're lighting a fire on damp ground, this dry wood keeps your flame off of the damp and allows it to burn quicker and more effectively. We're going to use a mixture of tinders. And one of the best ways to keep your tinder dry is to keep it in your pocket. So I have some paper birch bark here that I'm just going to rub down to break it up. And I have some Kraken or Fern. So I'm going to place that just by the fatwood shavings, leaving access to the shavings so I can get a spark onto it. I am now going to use my ferro rod and again the back of the knife to strike the rod. So, place the rod down near to the shavings. The knife, using the back of it, firmly gripped in a 45 degree angle. And pull with your left arm. Once fat, fat wood lights, 
transfer the rest of your tinder on there and then your big bundle of fine twigs. This is the critical stage now because you cannot leave the fire while it's burning through on this bit. It will not sustain. This is why you need to keep your twigs and all your fuel ready. Once the flame starts to come up through the fine wood, you can then start to add the thicker sticks. Making sure that you don't overload the fire, choke it. You need to be getting plenty of air through the wood to encourage the burn. As the fire starts to burn, you shouldn't be throwing the tinder on, but placing them so you don't crush everything that's down below. You need to keep the air moving through the fuel so it burns correctly. Now we're moving through the fuel sizes. As the flames start to climb through the thinner wood, you'll be able to gradually add the heavier fuel to it. So you're now getting the heat that will allow this heavier fuel to burn. self-sustaining fire going you have time to go wandering off to get more fuel or you get your tripod out and you can get the kettle on for a brew. <laughs>